What's up, everybody? The Zombie Talk 1, 2, 3 here. Jack McNeil. Hope you guys are having a great night. Now, I've been meaning to make a video on the Boston Red Sox. And uh, this is Ben Charrington, their GM, who took over for Theo Epstein a few years ago at last offseason. As Theo Epstein had a disappointing last season with the Boston Red Sox, so did Terry Francona, losing on the last game of the regular season. After a very hyped up se season, uh, getting Carl Crawford and getting Adrian Gonzalez, uh, it didn't seem that long ago when they were the team to beat. They were going to win the World Series. And they've been at the top of the AL East or winning the AL East for like 9 or 10, the last decade, really. I mean, they've won two World Series after that 80 or something drought. They've had great organizational success, and they have been extremely smart with their money. You looked at a team like the New York Mets completely fail. I mean, they, they spent the money irresponsibly. All these things went wrong. And you thought the Red Sox would kind of be above the edge. Uh, maybe more financially sound and just smarter management overall and how they deal with the team going forward. And you thought that they would have sustained success. And it's been extremely disappointing for Red Sox fans because you look at this organization and they go out and they sign a bunch of guys. Carl Crawford, they trade for Adrian Gonzalez, sign him. They have a ton of payroll. I mean, you're looking at worrying about the luxury tax. You're looking at uh, John Lackey and a lot of investments. Uh, Daisuke Matsuzaka, obviously Daisuke, in pitching stars that have not worked out at all. I mean, their pitching is was a complete mess. So now they're going and completely flipping around their roster, uh, going to rebuild this team, trying to make it as good as possible. They still have a few core offensive pieces, but they have dealt away a lot of them. And now they end up with guys like this, James Loney, first baseman. He's been pretty much the most average hitter that you could possibly see as a starting first baseman. He was supposed to be a high prospect, peaked at number 34 on the list, for a top 100 prospects and this just shows you that not every prospect pans out if you can draft a guy and invest a little money in him and he ends up being a low-end starter you're looking at a great investment so you can't complain about any prospect developing but he's definitely been a disappointment here as a first baseman he's just someone to fill until they get a long-term future first baseman here's the star of the trade Ruby De La Rosa he is the catch of the trade here that the Dodgers had to give up. 23-year-old Dominican Republic was uh, signed a few years ago in the international free agent market. He can reach up to 100 miles an hour, average of about 96, 97. He had Tommy John surgery. He recovered. He could be a number two starter for the Boston Red Sox, and right now they need pitching so bad. So for them getting a very, very good prospect here was extremely important. Now, they also got the Dodgers' number two prospect, a very enticing name here, Alan Webster, who was also involved in Cubs talks uh, when they were talking about possibly getting Ryan Dempster. I think this is a much better deal to be involved in. Alan Webster going to the Red Sox. I think I see him as a number four, number five starter for the Red Sox in the future. That's if he can develop. Now, he has some control issues every once in a while. He started off the year in double-A, struggled a little bit with an over seven ERA. But he's settled down. He has a great fastball, a good sinker. He's got a lot of good secondary stuff. If he can get his control, you're looking at someone who has been compared to guys like Derek Lowe. But I don't think that he will maybe, you know, he could reach a ceiling as number two starter. But it's more realistic to look number three, number four, which is so great if you're looking at the Red Sox to be able to acquire a few of these pitchers that have good chances of reaching the major league level and helping out while also clearing up a lot of salary in the deal. Uh, also, Jerry Sands, not a bad pickup here. He was a late-round draft pick, didn't have to spend a lot of money for the Dodgers, but he rose of that uh, prospect system there, the farm system, and he put up some great numbers in AAA with almost 25 home runs this year, batting over 300. He's had some time in the majors, hasn't adjusted. He's hit around 250, but still could be a solid major league pitcher at multiple positions, right, left, and first base, some positions that the Red Sox desperately need going forward. Again, he's only like 25 too, so a nice pit player to pick up there. Also, Ivan DeJesus. Um, this is a guy who probably will not make the Major League roster next year. It's going to be between him and uh, Pedro Soraka, or I, I forget uh, his name for a second, but not much of a future there, so not much of a pickup there, but uh, we'll see what happens. I just want to show you, to remind you, how bad it went last season, and these are the guys that they gave up, plus Nick Punto, obviously. They're clearing $260 million worth of payroll for the next few years, so you're going to look at certain free agents, but I don't think the Red Sox are going to make the same mistakes. I don't really see them going out and get Josh Hamilton. I think they're going to be much smarter with their money, get a few little pickups, maybe one moderately big picker up, pick up, but they're not going to go out on a shopping spree like the Miami Marlins or what the Dodgers just did. I think they're going to focus more in trades and developing players and getting back to that winning, uh, sustainable winning team because they have the potential and they have the payroll flexibility to be at top of the AL East. They need to make the right decisions and they need to spend the money correctly.
maybe not spending on older pitchers, paying them $20 million a year, maybe not going up uh, and, and spending on an outfielder who's probably past his prime for $20 million a year. We'll see what they can do here. Uh, I, I wish them the best of luck. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.